Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. And we're in Chapter 2 part of this playlist that I'm calling Discrete Random Variables. And today's topic is the geometric distribution. Now, there's two ways to think about the geometric distribution, and both are appropriate but there's subtle differences. And which one you use is just a matter of convention or co uh, convenience, but let's look at them both. Number one, how many trials, you know, success or failure, is needed to get one success? Now the support is on the set X, which is one, two, three, et cetera, right? We could have a success after the first trial or the second or the third, et cetera. And this is actually the geometric distribution that we're going to use in this video. But this, the other way to think about it is the number of failures before the first success. That's This is number two. And the set X is on zero, one, two, three, etc. If we have a success the first trial, we've had zero failures. If we have a success on the second trial, we've had one failure. So you're modeling how many failures as opposed to the number one case here which is we're just modeling how many trials until a success so the geometric distribution is a random variable x follows the geometric distribution with parameter p oh i forgot this note that in both cases we define p as the probability of success and one minus p sometimes called q is the probability of failure that's what this parameter p is in our distribution it's the probability of a success and of course, the support is on the positive integers. Now, the moment generating function for an, a uh, geometric random variable, so let x be a ge geometric random variable with parameter p. Remember, p is the probability of a success. The moment generating function for x is given by this. So mx of t is this fraction p times e to the t 1 minus q e to the t now where t has to be less than minus natural log of q and remember q is 1 minus p so it's between 0 and 1 and the log of numbers between 0 and 1 are negative and so that's why we have that negative sign you could take it in and say the log of 1 over q either way is fine but here's a quick proof the moment generating function of x is defined the expected value of e to the tx. And since this is discrete, you take e to the tx times the density summed over all possible values, which is 1 to infinity. Well, we put in what the density is for f. Some might call it a probability mass function, but it's a density of the discrete type. So we can just call it a density. Well, that's what is here and since p is not indexed we can take it out and that's what this p is but the q to the minus one let's take that out and and take it below and that's why we're dividing by q here and what's left over is q e to the t all raised to the x and this is a geometric series from one to infinity and if Q e to the t is less than 1, which is actually what this requirement up here is, then there's a formula for it, and this is it. And so this is the moment generating function. And we'll, we're going to use that to derive moments, the mean, the second moment, the variance. We're going to use this moment generating function. So let x be a geometric random variable with parameter p. This is theorem 9. The mean of x is given by 1 over p. Expect the value of x, 1 over p. So let's prove this. So use the moment generating function of x, which we derived in theorem 8. We need to take the derivative of it. And so there's a formula for the derivative of this fraction. Remember, it's with respect to t. And then it simplifies to this expression on the right. Now to find the first moment, we have to take, we took the first derivative, now we have to set t equal to 0. And so when you plug in e to the 0, you get 1. And so it reduces to p over 1 minus q squared. But 1 minus q 
is just p so we get p squared and then one of those cancel we're left with one over p and that's what we said it was going to be now the second moment so let's let that theorem 10 let x be a geometric random variable with parameter p the second moment of x is given by this 2 minus p over p squared and to derive or to yeah derive the second moment we need the second derivative of the moment generating function and so the second derivative of the moment generating function is actually the derivative of this expression and, and I wrote out the first term. This is kind of my mind, and this is what I would have gotten after the taking this, you know, the derivative of that first derivative. And then it simplifies to this. So like on my paper, there were a couple steps between the end here. But now we evaluate this second derivative of the moment generating function at t equals zero. So the expected value of x squared Second derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at t. So e to the zero is just one. So all those e to the t's become one, and we're left with this. Now, one of these, this is p squared in the denominator. One of them cancels with the p, and we're left with one plus q over p squared. But q is one minus p, so we get two minus p over p squared. Now, theorem 11 let x be a geometric random variable with parameter p the second central moment of x which is the variance is given by 1 minus p over p squared so sigma squared is equal to the expected value of x minus mu quantity squared right that's the second central moment and the proof is this in an earlier video this expected value the the second central moment is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the mean quantity squared. So we plug in the values that we achieve. Remember, expected value of x is 1 over p, but then squared, you get 1 over p squared. You combine those and you get 1 minus p over p squared, which is what it should be. Now let's do a quick illustration and then call this video quits. And a natural 20 in Dungeons and Dragons term, for, a natural 20 is a Dungeons and Dragons term for rolling a 20 on a 20-sided die, which is the maximum possible value before any bonuses are applied. Find the mean number of rolls needed to roll a 20 on a 20-sided die. Let x be a geometric random variable with parameter 1 over p. Then the mean number of rolls is the expected value of x, which is 1 over p, which is 1 20. Yeah, this should be 1 over 1 20th, which is 20. So this is this is not right, right? It's one over p, but p is one twentieth, right? When you're rolling the twenty side of die, the probably rolling the twenty is one over twenty, and so this is one over p, which is one over one twentieth, which is twenty. So that's a little error there. Now let's do a, a simulation in R, where we just uh, simulate rolling a twenty side of die. So I, I create this function called roll dot 20 we're going to roll a 20 sided die oh and i probably could have made it general for any sided die but i didn't so on um roll number it won initially and the result is continue and we sample with replacement one time from the numbers 1 to 20 and that's our roll now if roll is 20 we stop if it's not we continue then we add one to our roll count so it's the second roll we sample from one to 20 again just once with replacement actually it doesn't need to be replacement or not but that's just a habit of mine i guess put it in if roll is 20 we stop otherwise we keep going and we output the number the roll number so if we run the function roll.20 the first example, we, it took 25 times to roll a 20. The second time we ran this simulation, it took five times to roll a 20. 
Now let's conduct a simulation. Let's do a simulation of 300,000 simulations of rolling until you get a 20. So let's uh, use S apply from 1 to N. N is 300,000. We're just going to call this function roll 20 300,000 times. We're going to store, store it in this vector rolls. And if we just take the mean number of rolls, it's 20.00. So it's really close to 20, which it should be. So remember, this vector consists of numbers, you know, could be 52, could be 3, could be 1, could be 20, and then that's the average number. If we look at a plot, oh, and as always, I copy and paste the R code in the comment section. If we look at 300,000 reps and we just track our cumulative average as we go across, you know, initially it's pretty variable, right? It might take 50 and then 20 and then 10 and then 5 and then 50. But as we proceed each experiment, the mean number of rolls, you can see approaches 20. And of course, if we go to inf infinity, that it'll equal 20. So, but that's a little uh, simulation there. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. The next video will be on the discrete uniform distribution. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I sure did. Please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.